active real estate racket. Mums and dads, ordinary investors, and some of our best known sports stars, they all fell for the scam. And thanks to King Con, most of them will lose everything. No wonder he's such a hard man to catch. In the heart of Sydney, in this sea of steel and glass towers, is the home of one of Australia's biggest swindlers. This is one of two magnificent sky houses in Harry Seidler's fabulous Cove apartment building. Worth about $12 million for the two of them, on three floors, lawn on the roof with a spa, marble absolutely everywhere, every conceivable luxury. Ah, uh, yes, and have you seen the view? The penthouse is home to Kovalan Bangaroo, a South African Indian who came to this country without a cent only seven years ago. He's supposed to have made a fortune in property and to be one of the smartest and richest men in the country. But he's made his money by cheating ordinary Australians. Tonight, we track him down Evening, and gentlemen. confront him with his crimes. Do you have any remorse? Any guilt? Any shame? I'm going to lose my home. I have to sell my home. And I can't, I've got three little kids. I can't. Bangaroo is no ordinary con man. He's robbed 100 investors of at least $20 million. So how did he persuade so many people to part with their savings? His company Streetwise promised easy home loans and a chance to ride on the property boom, with big name endorsements behind it. The key to Bangaroo's success was he hooked in Australian sporting heroes to invest in and publicise his schemes. Oh, it's right through him. Superb bowling from Brett Lee. Test cricketer Brett Lee, his brother Shane, and batsman turned commentator Michael Slater bowled up $2 million between them. Socceroo Mark Viduka kicked in more than a million. And having conned them, Bangaroo then paid the cricketers $750,000 so he could use them to con others. That was the deciding thing that's, that sunk us, unfortunately, when he said, oh, the Australian cricket team are interested in this and they're, inv they're investing with us. The endorsement clinched right. it for Lucette and her yeah. sister Deborah Weiss, who put their faith and $50,000 behind their sporting heroes. And that decided you? Yeah. That was kind of like, well, if they're involved in this, it must be OK. With big-name backers and the market booming, the millions poured in. But Bangaroo simply spent the money. His fabulous penthouse home with retina scan security swallowed $6 million, with extra for the grand piano and the $14,000 Japanese toilets that lift the lid as you approach. Another $5 million was gobbled up by the next door penthouse, which is still a building site. Work has stopped here because his fellow residents took him to court and because the bills haven't been paid. At least a bank robber says, stick them up I, and give us your money. These people say, hey, I'll look after you. Give us your money and I'll make you rich. And then they steal the money and they go. Neil Jenman has seen thousands of victims of real estate scams and knows why people fall for the dream. It's not greed that gets them in, he says, but fear of being old and poor, which spruikers like Mangaroo know how to exploit. It's evil, and there's a saying about evil, evil is very seductive, and these people are master seducers. There was no reason to believe that this man was a shark. There was no reason to believe that. And I suppose we're just too trusting. We trusted him. And we trusted him with half a million dollars. Jill O'Donnell and her husband John stand to lose everything. They mortgaged their home and gave Bangaroo the money to develop this Sydney duplex. But the site lies empty, the property will never be built. Bangaroo has taken their money and run. Normal, everyday people's lives are shattered by this man. It's just, they're just shattered. In great shape, is it? Uh, no. Jeez. Actually, worse than. Oh my God. Well, how much have you got in here? 
I've got quite a substantial amount. Um, yeah, I've got half a million dollars invested in here. Maria is perhaps the saddest case of all. Two years ago, she also mortgaged her home for $500,000 to invest in the same Bangaroo development. There's my um, $500,000 view, Paul. She was after financial security. And with a legal contract and personal guarantee, she had no reason to expect she'd be robbed. But that is what happened. Her money is gone. And like all the other investors, she has no title to the property. My 12-year-old, she knows something's wrong. And she says to me, Mum, what's wrong? You can tell me. Oh, I can't tell her. I want to protect them. And I suppose I can't now. Maria and the O'Donnells aren't the only ones who need to get half a million dollars back on this wreck. As we've discovered, Bangaroo sold this dream not once, not twice, but six times over. The place is a bomb site and mortgaged to the hilt, and Maria is terrified about the future. My family knows nothing about this. I've got to go and face them now and tell them what's happening. I'm sorry. I can't, I, I'm sick of being like this. I can't stand being like this, it's not me. I wish I could kill the bastard. I mean, he's out there driving his fancy cars. He drove a car that was worth two of my homes. This car alone cost one million dollars. Bangaroo's Mercedes Maybach. He had it flown to Australia after seeing it in the window at Harrods and was one of only three people in the country to own one. He also bought a Bentley Continental, a BMW four-wheel drive, a Porsche Carrera, a Mercedes Sports, a couple of Audis, all up close to $3 million worth of toys. Bangaroo's big spending got him on the BRW rich list, and he reveled in the fame and business it brought him. But today, as it dawns on his creditors and investors that they've been had, King Kong is nowhere to be found. All that's left is the mess he's created and the pain he's caused. I've tried ringing him. What happens? He goes straight to message bank. I leave messages, message bank is full now. Which is why we decided that the only way to catch Bangaroo was to trap him ourselves, with the help of Neil Genman. Before he became a real estate crusader, Genman was one of the world's best salesmen. And if anyone could get Bangaroo out of hiding, it was him, using money as the bait. I said, look, I've got a, I've got a mate, he's got a couple of million dollars that he's just come into, and maybe you might, you know, you might like to talk to him. And suddenly, it's like a big bit of cheese, and these rats are coming for the cheese. Now, I would hope if they do turn up that you'll be the rat sack on them. Genman made the call, and Bangaroo swallowed the $2 million bait. Two weeks ago, as we waited in Genman's bedroom, Bangaroo and his sidekick Trevor Downs made themselves at home in the book line study and prepared to skin another sucker. Evening, gentlemen. Mr. Bangaroo, Paul Barry from 60 Minutes. You're a very difficult man to get to meet. How are you? Nice of you to come. You'll be OK. You watch, you a lot watch. of people trying to talk to you over the last few days. A lot of your investors, you won't answer the phone. You don't let them come and see you. What have you done with their money? Well... It's not sure, a question you must know. Of, it's not a question of what we've done with the money. It's all the money is in the assets, the property assets that we've... All the acquired. money's in your cars and your, your apartments. You've spent it on the leases of your Bentley and your Maybach and your other five or six cars and your two six million dollar apartments. Oh, I don't think so. All I can tell you is that all the money is in the property, our assets exceed our liabilities, and we have valuations to certify that the properties and the assets exceed the valuations. That's, you're a liar Keep and a going. cheat. Keep going. Keep and you've keep taken going. their money and you've spent it and, and you've broken just, your promises. You can say, just, yeah, you can yeah, say what you like, mate. Go, go for it. Who are you? Trevor Downs, my name. Trevor Downs is Bangaroo's henchman. He's been promising investors on a daily basis that everything is fine and their money is safe. Trevor Downs, you've Nobody's... told as many lies as this man has told. No, done. I have not. Day after day no after way. day to the investors we've talked no to, way. you say to them, it's going to be fine. There's only one way. The building's going to happen. And here's another nasty twist. You would think our corporate watchdogs would step in to protect investors from swindlers like Bangaroo. 
So, what have Australia's financial policemen been doing while he's been robbing the public? Absolutely nothing. Last year, Deborah and Lucette sued Bangaroo and got back some of their $50,000. But they also tried in vain to stop him fleecing others. So who did you complain to? Well, <laughs> who didn't we complain to is probably more like it. We went to every government department we could possibly think of, ASICS, ACCC, um, we contacted our local MP. And what do they all say? Well, they just kept saying nothing to do with us. So I thought, well, how big do I have to be to get some justice? The first objective of bureaucracy seems to be, how can I pass the buck to somebody else? So because property's involved, they say, oh, it's not financial advice. And they won't even look any further. What we need to do is we need to lock up more bangaroos and more of these people. We need to put them in jail, handcuff them. You know, CMYF, clang mind your fingers, buddy, and, and lock them up and send them to prison. Do you think you're going to go to jail? Oh, for sure he'll go to jail. I got a lawyer here that said there's clear evidence of fraud. What do you get nowadays for stealing millions of dollars off people? We haven't stolen no money. That's your opinion. Will you meet your investors? Sorry. At Hall and Chadwick? Wait. Yes. All our, all our concerns were right. So if your, invest, if your investors come to Hall and Chadwick no. tomorrow, you will meet them? Yes. Good. But Bangaroo's promise to face his victims was just another lie, like his pledge that everyone will be paid. One hour after our chat, Bangaroo handed over his companies to a corporate administrator. And when creditors met two weeks ago, the best he could do was talk to them by telephone. I think I'm hearing in your voice you want us to be a little bit compassionate to you, but, mate, you don't even have the balls to be here. The news on his companies is all bad. There's a shortfall of $20 million or more. So the banks will get their money, but 400 unsecured creditors will get nothing. And the O'Donnells and Maria and many others will almost certainly lose their homes. And the tragedy of it all, says Administrator Jeff MacDonald, is that Australia's corporate cops could have stopped it. ASIC looked at this company twice. There's a huge deficiency, $20 million. How could they have let it happen? If the job had been done properly a year ago, um, this company would have been closed down back then. Mm. So why wasn't it? I don't know. I, don't, I think there's a problem with the system. There's bad news for the cricketers too. Six weeks ago, after a long legal battle, the Lee brothers and Michael Slater got back their $2 million with interest. But Administrator Jeff MacDonald now wants that payout reversed, to share among all the creditors. There's a reasonable chance it is, on the face of it, the sort of thing that the law is designed to overturn. Um, am I going to go after them? Uh, in short, yes. Bangaroo's cars have now been repossessed and returned to the finance companies. Up in the now empty penthouse, all the fancy furniture has been spirited away and there's every sign of a hurried departure. Up on the private sky-top lawn, the pool is empty and the grass is beginning to die. But the man they call King Con has shot through. We're told he's gone on holiday in sunny North Queensland. I'd like him to be brought to justice. What he's doing with people's lives is criminal. He needs to go to jail for this. Do you have any remorse? Any guilt? Any shame? Nothing to say to the people whose life you've wrecked? Nothing to say to the people who are going to lose their houses? Because of you? And your cars and your apartment? No, I don't think so. You don't think they are? No. I don't Nothing to say to them? So you can tell them now they're not going to? The money has gone. As you well know, and he's got it. Good night, Mr. Bangaroo. Good night, Mr. Bangaroo. Pleasure to meet you.